Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. These are tough times and they're getting even tougher. The clock is ticking. The countdown to collapse is well underway. What are you going to do about it? Will you just wait for it to happen? Or will you be ready when it happens? The decision is yours and yours alone. Join myself, Mickey Fulp, Robert Ian, David Morgan, Jeff Berwick, Elijah Johnson, Alan Butler, Gregory Manorino, Daniel Amaduri, Andy Hoffman, Tacoa De Silva, Trace Mare, one of the world's leading Bitcoin authorities, Bix Weir, Jay Taylor, and Gary Christensen at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium in Las Vegas on February 21st and 22nd and learn how to create your plan to survive the collapse. The last Liberty Mastermind Symposium was one of the most highly rated conferences ever, and this one promises to be even better. Don't miss it. Join us and register now at libertymastermind.us. Libertymastermind.us. This one is going to be out of this world and it's going to be even better because it's in Las Vegas, Nevada. Go to Liberty Mastermind US and sign up today. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz on 1230 WBZT. President gave a speech about proposed NSA reforms. My feeling is you probably feel the same. They're more illusory than substantive. And certainly the person you're about to hear from, well, he feels the same. Mickey Fulp, you know him well, the mercenarygeologist.com. Mickey, welcome back. Thanks a lot, Kerry. So your take on it? Anything uh, anything of anything there? Well, it was, uh, as usual, a bunch of double speak with not a lot of substance to it, as you so eloquently stated in your intro <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, and, and Eloquence is my middle name, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little bit of nothing, once again, you know, war is peace, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we even have had... Uh, the mo- one of the most liberal Democrats in the Senate from my home state of New Mexico, an Albuquerque lawyer named Martin Heinrich, now a senator, a uh, junior senator from New Mexico, is on the Senate Intelligence Committee, and he issued a statement that was just scathing uh, in regards to uh, Obama's lack of forthrightness in this speech. You know, it reminds me a bunch of... Uh, uh, a, a little bit like uh, Obama's uh, Nobel Peace Prize uh, speech where he said the, the word war 28 times and the word peace 14 times. You know, he, these uh, lawyers we seem to elect uh, as politicians certainly are wordsmiths or they have writers that are wordsmiths working for them. But, uh, you know, Martin Heinrich came, came out and said uh, – uh, I take Ben Franklin's admon- admonition that a society that trades essential liberties for uh, short-term freedoms risks losing both. So, uh, you know, this this is serious business here. Hey, Mickey, let's not forget, we're not talking about phone calls here. This isn't about just phone calls. Many of us, just like we don't send letters in the mail that much anymore, we don't make as many phone calls as we used to. We send texts, we browse the internet, and you send emails far more than you make phone calls. He didn't talk about any of that. And the other thing he never addressed is the fact of what Judge Leon, who called the bulk uh, collection of data certainly violative of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, of the Bill of Rights, he said it's certainly violated it. Uh, you're right against unreasonable uh, searches and seizures. He never mentioned any of that. And that's what it's really about is you're right against wholesale collection of data of which phone calls are a little snippet of it. It's all the other data. He never mentioned any of that. So 
really phone calls are yesterday's news. That was your parents' uh, <laughs> form of co- of communication. It's all the modern communication that takes place now. I mean, it's all a small part of it because really phone calls, very few people have plain old telephone service pots. Now it's a voice over IP. It's a form of data and it's wholesale data collection that we're talking about. So as usual, he doesn't even talk about the right subject. And then he never really talks about what Judge Leon's holding was, is that none of this high-tech data collection has ever stopped or prevented a terrorist attack. The judge specifically held this. So he never addresses any of the issues and, of course, arrives at the wrong conclusion every single time. So we're having the wrong debate, as usual. Well, that's true, and I am certainly a person that does not use the phone very much anymore for the occasional business call or conference call, uh, you know, and, and very much I depend on text. Uh, I feel somewhat protected in the fact that, that I use uh, uh, BlackBerry Messenger, which is a, as secure a, an encrypted texting technology that you can possibly get, but certainly I'm sure that if the U.S. government wants into that, they can. Uh, they can get it, as opposed to most texts, it's not out there in cyberspace for uh, ad infinitum years. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very, very concerned about this. You know, the thing I think that's encouraging about is the groundswell of protest against this. And it spans from from the right to the left, you know, I would think uh, we, we would be looked on as uh, conservative, libertarian, economically conservative, social libertarians, uh, categorizes as, as on the uh, on the right side of the equation. But, you know, you have a very left wing Democratic senator. He joined with uh, Mark Udall of Colorado who is a liberal senator, and Ron Wyden of Oregon, who I am not familiar with. But this is kind of the, the left wing of the Democratic Party. Uh, and, and we also have uh, very, very left wingers like uh, Amy Goodman and Democracy Now! is, is very vociferous about this, ver- uh, about this issue. So... Uh, The judges so far have been on the side of the people, freedom-loving people, and we hope that there we can create some groundswell support to to get the surveillance stopped. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, I, I don't know that there's any laws that are on the books that really allow this. And even if there are laws on the books, they can't be constitutional, all right? You can't tell me that every single person in the United States with a cell phone, with an internet connection, with an email address, and with a browser is a potential terrorist and therefore subject to search and seizure of their phone records, their internet records, their browsing records, and their emails. And that's what's happening. You know, you just can't tell me that, uh, that whatever laws might be on the books that allow this which I guess mainly is the Patriot Act, that's the only one that I know of, uh, can be constitutional. It just doesn't pass the uh, the smell test here, you know? No, it, it certainly does not. And, you know, I'm going to quote a, a guy from, from the pre- that predates my time even, but certainly remember uh, in my childhood this guy on television, and that's Edward R. Murrow, and he said, a, na- a nation of sheep will beget a government of wolves, so it's time to quit being sheeple here and try to do something about this problem we have with an intrusive, increasingly militaristic government directed towards its own individual, individual s- citizens. And we all know that uh, socialism is the evil twin of fascism. So uh, I fear that's the way our country is going. And we need to rise up and and do something about it here. What do you say to the person, Mickey, who says, well, 
I don't do anything wrong. If you have nothing to hide, then what do you fear from this? Well, I really do have nothing to hide. I'm vociferous about my criticism of the U.S. government. And so far, uh, knock on wood, or uh, we uh, apparently still have the rights of freedom and, and privacy and free speech. So um, people that, uh, that seem, those are the sheeple. Those are the people that uh, will get eat by, eaten by the government of wolves. And personally, I prefer not to be a victim in this instance. Yeah, and that brings us, of course, to the Liberty Mastermind Symposium where, you know, last time, the first one, you spoke eloquently about why you're a target. And if you're a target, then everybody's a target. I'm a target, you're a target, and really, look, let's face it, the way the laws are written today, you can't uh, not commit a felony from the time you wake up and brush your teeth to the time you walk over and prepare breakfast, right? I mean, you're guilty of multiple felonies every day without even knowing it. Well, that's true. And, you know, I'm apparently into quotations today, so I'll pull one out for you from James Madison. Uh, He said, if tyranny and oppression come to this land, it will be in the guise of fighting a foreign enemy. And that's exactly what has happened here. We are in a never-ending war uh, against terrorism, and that is increasingly directed toward our, our, our citizens. You know, and a lot of this started actually in 1994 when Congress passed a law that uh, post-Cold War that uh, allowed surplus Cold War military equipment to be turned over to uh, local police, and we see, I mean, how many SWAT situations uh, do we have now? Someone's barricaded themselves in their, in their house, and we have a SWAT situation, and I've never quite figured out how you barricade yourself in your house. Do you go out and put mattresses against the door like the Three Stooges would do, or exactly what constitutes barricading yourself in your own individual private residence, Gary. Hey, just last week, Mickey, there's a guy, he's uh, sleeping in his house. So, uh, girlfriend of his goes to the cops and says he's got marijuana plants in his house, a few of them. They proceed to go and get a no-knock warrant because evidently he presents a real threat to the country and humanity. They bust into his house. He doesn't know it's the cop, the cops. He's got an AK-47. He hears a commotion. He thinks criminals are breaking into his house. He starts shooting, and he kills a deputy. All right? Now, purportedly, he doesn't know it's a deputy because they didn't knock. They just broke down the door. And now he's uh, being held for murder. Now... Maybe they said it's the police, maybe not. Do you believe somebody who says they're the police when they're breaking down your door at 2 in the morning? I don't think I'd believe them. I think I'd shoot first and ask questions later. Not that I'm growing marijuana because I am a lousy farmer. But nonetheless, (laughs) you know, can you blame the guy for shooting when somebody's breaking into his house at 2 in the morning? I mean, Oh, absolutely not, Carrie. And this is happening time and time again. Um uh, you know, I we we are very active on Twitter at Mercenary Geo, and uh, I am very much uh, a, a critic of the local police and the New Mexico State Police uh, in New Mexico, and and we tweet on uh, certainly a weekly, if almost not daily basis, some travesty of justice again, that the police have perpetrated against innocent citizens uh, with, with shooting people in the back and shooting them because the, the black plastic spoon the man had in his hand when he walked to the door of his house was thought to be a, a gun, et cetera, et cetera. So this, this just goes on and on and on, and it's, uh, 
it's it's scary is what it is scary yeah and that's why we're doing the liberty mastermind symposium again. absolutely yeah yep it's a great place where like-minded people can get together talk about these issues because they're not even getting discussed certainly not in the mainstream media you, you know your website mine thousands of others are discussing it but People need to meet face to face and really get into it and really understand what you're up against because uh, it's formidable. And like the title says, the clock is ticking, countdown to collapse. How much longer it goes on, nobody knows. But uh, it certainly is cause for alarm and you need to be prepared for it. Uh, you know, depending where you live, what you want to do, and your resources depends on what your preparations are going to be. Obviously, we all need to prepare, though, in our own way. Oh, most definitely, and I uh, very much look forward to appearing at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium February 21st, 22nd. I'll throw out a, a little teaser. I'm one of 15 speakers. The title, tentative title of my talk, and this is predicated on the fact that my youth was very much colored by reading uh, an, a lots of dystopian novels, starting with Animal Farm and Brave New World and, and uh, uh, other books such as that. And the title of my talk will be The United States of America as Dystopia and the Threat of World, One World Government. So I invite everybody to come, and we, we had a lot of fun last time, and I... I can't wait for this to come up in about a month here. Yeah, me neither. And uh, you want to sign up, go over to libertymastermind.us, libertymastermind.us. Sign up for the conference, sign up for the dinner on Friday night. We've made it as economical as possible. We're in a non-gaming property, so the slot machine dings and dangs are not going to keep you up till 3 in the morning. Yahoo! <laughs> yeah, no drunken maniacs, uh, perusing, uh, carousing in the hallways. I like it that way. I stopped gambling years ago. It's just going to be fun and intellectual entertainment and stimulation, which is difficult to find in Sin City. Anyway, Mickey, always a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. And actually, we'll probably see you there before. Well, we'll have the monthly review in about a week. So we'll, uh, we'll talk to you and then we'll see you in uh, Lost Wages. Yep, and uh, if you're going to be in New York uh, for the Super Bowl, I'll see you there. Go Denver Broncos. <laughs> okay, we'll see you there. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Bye. Our friend Tom Dyson at the Palm Beach Letter is giving away free copies of a really cool report he put together called How to Protect Yourself from America's New Secret Police. Inside, you'll learn all sorts of simple everyday tricks you can use to make yourself a little less visible and vulnerable to scammers, hackers, and even the federal government. For instance, inside Tom's report, you'll learn which free internet email service never to use. This company doesn't care if your account gets hacked or not, or things the government must tell you if they request your social security number. And how to spot skimmers lying in wait on ATMs and gas pumps and much, much more. These tricks and secrets are low-hanging fruit ideas. You don't have to invest time or much money into them. Most are free. But by taking some basic measures, you can make your privacy much harder to invade than your neighbors. Tom's report is available for a limited time to listeners who take a trial subscription to his newsletter. Just visit the Financial Survival Network homepage for more information or go to www.palmbeachletter2.com. That's www.palmbeachletter2.com. Hi, it's Carrie Lutz. I recently decided to move my retirement account into physical precious metals to hedge against the coming times. If you want to move an existing retirement account into physical precious metals, 
that you can hold in your hand tax-free. There's no company that can do it more quickly and efficiently than Regal Assets. It took them just 24 hours to open my new IRA account, and all I had to do was fill out one simple form. The best part is that Regal Assets does all the work for you. They cover the setup and administrative costs for 2013. If you're interested in making the same move I did, call 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, that's 855-678-6620, or visit them at regalassets.com. You'll be glad you did, and tell them Kerry sent you. The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at financialsurvivalnetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network.